need to fear, Fameworth is here with another FE2 Colin CM walkthrough, and this one is fresh out the oven. Hyperspeed V3 is my newest map beaten, and like Focus, is a rather interesting case. Somewhat relative to hyperspace, this map took as long as it did because of a mental block. Two, actually, but we'll get to those later. This is a similar specimen to Speedbreaker, Shutdown, and Hyperspace in that, barring a few standout obstacles, the challenge is basically being quick as speedy Gonzales on caffeine. And you're about to find out how easily your run can go wrong in this brand new, horribly delayed walkthrough. Alright, let's do it. First thing you do when the door opens is take a hard left. Then jump onto the boxes less than a second after you enter the building. The Rava lies early. Follow the path and treat this truss liar like some kind of a pseudo wall jump. Jump around this wall and continue along the path, cutting any corners until you reach the next door. Jump right onto this platform and hop around onto this jump wall and crank your camera a little towards it to ensure you grapple on immediately. Go up this truss ladder with D, or whatever your camera angle is, head to the next button, then jump and do a 180 like so. Don't wait for this platform to appear, jump to where it is, continue going counterclockwise up to this jump wall, jump up to this perch, then carefully prepare your next jump, it's easy to mess up. Jump and land as high as you can onto the jump wall and you should make it up. Now this room is much tighter on time compared to the first two, so get ready to go extra fast. Hit the button, follow the path, and when you reach the second angled ledge, run across the edge a smidge, then jump to the beam, it's a bit high up. As you're about to land on this perch, turn your camera to face the pillar and jump around it. Continue along the path and, if you are fast enough, you'll make it to the next tight bit. The cooling section. Swim your way through the walls and when you reach this button, turn back the moment you break the surface. Make your way to the opposite end, then swim down and go back up as soon as you're level with the button. Just make sure you're close enough to the buttons when you do this. Go up this passage and be sure not to hit the edges, or you die. And, if you've done everything correctly, you'll make it out alive. And thankfully, the next room, the server system, is an utter breather in terms of time. This is also one of few spots in this map, for me at least, where it's easier to use mouse lock. But I digress. Jump far out from the edge and strafe into the jump wall. Turn around and enter first person, this next bit is pretty cramped. Clear the gap here and jump your way to the next button. You can press it by jumping from the lit platform in order to save a bit of time, but that's only necessary if you mess up the wall jump. Oh yeah, if that happens, you can get back up by fiddling with mouse lock to climb the cross beams, but it doesn't always work. Make your way to the door, and now this is where things get real. You've got a few tricky obstacles, and you gotta do them fast. Exit first person if you haven't already, keep mouse lock on as you jump up these boxes, and onto this wall of trusses, and hold left as you climb up. Jump up and get this button with your arm. The way you get it hardly matters, so long as you do it quick. Next is these stupid ass jump walls. Jump so that you land high enough on the pink wall to be able to reach the blue wall, and hopefully you'll be able to clear it. Sometimes though, your upblocking just won't stick the walls for some odd reason, and this is completely unavoidable. Frustrating, I know. Jump to this square platform to save yourself a half second, and this truss ladder here, pay close attention to your exiting jump. It's very easy to slip off or overshoot the ring if you're not careful. When you exit the ladder, position yourself to land and don't start moving until your feet are certainly on the ground. Jump once or twice on this ladder so you don't fly into the air, and now, the first big one. For the longest time, I always tried to clear the second strafe without mouse lock, with a predictably low success rate, and I seldom tried enabling it because I thought it would take too much mouse work. But eventually I realized that I was reaching the door with a few spots in my run, so I went fuck it and started doing it this way. Not that it wasn't without its annoyances, but anyway, jump around this wall like so. It can be done fairly easy without mouse lock, but this one, oh ho, ho, no, use mouse lock and strafe around onto the wall jump. Make sure you're high enough to reach the perch ahead and jump backwards and make sure you jump far out for both of them. Once you pull this off, fix your camera and follow the path to the room exit, but whoa, slow down. This here is one of those jumps that all but require you to stick out a little over the edge before jumping. Run up to the edge and stop while facing this angle for a fraction of a second, then jump and you should make it across. 
head down the bridge pieces and jump into this passage, hop over the gap and jump up the truss ladder, dismount when you're close to the top and get the button. Head back out and onto this bridge and this rail you cannot jump over. You have to go around and through the opening. Be quick or the advancing purple wall will get you. Fly up the ladder and you'll be met with my second big block in this map. I cannot tell you how many times I managed to get past these barriers only to go through a long streak of failing them because I kept forgetting how to do the jumps correctly. Oh dear Buildum, it's the QZ Cargo Requiem jump all over again! But after about maybe the 30th or 40th time, I think I've managed to get down the optimal jump. Position yourself so that you're basically approaching it from a 45 degree angle and jump at said angle. The way you move doesn't seem to matter here, just the angle. Strafe around the wall as close as you can without actually touching it and move towards the bridge at the same angle but in reverse. Repeat for the second wall and hit the button. Up next is another gap that's practically too far to clear normally. Again, position yourself so you stick out a little and jump. One thing that makes your life a bit easier is that the wall isn't that fast and you should be at least a decent distance ahead of it. If you manage to make it across, stand against the invisible force field and prepare yourself. These arrows have a high velocity. The force field will disable when the purple wall is just about to touch you. Jump when you reach the very edge and you've won. After the huge trip that was Overflow Extended, this felt pretty refreshing to break down, even if I spoke more about my experience than the methods at times. If it wasn't for those mental blocks though, I would have beaten this nearly as fast as old Shutdown. Speaking of Shutdown, yes, after two years, I finally went and re-beat this map in its current form. And I can safely say that this was a right pain in the ass. Not so much to beat, but because the new version of the final room is hidden behind a variant. I'm not making this up. Every time you play the map, there's a 50-50 chance of either getting the challenging new path or the painfully moderate old path. This seriously took me over an hour to do, simply because I would often go multiple attempts of reaching the end just to get the easy ending, when I can reach the end 4 times out of 5, and THEN get the hard ending and die within 10 seconds. It was incredibly annoying. So like the Shut Up revamp, I'm gonna go over the differences in the map compared to last time in a super quick mini walkthrough. Yay! The vertical vent now has barriers that you have to swim around, so watch out for those. This truss ladder ends with a jump wall, so it's much easier despite the longer gap. This wall jump is also easier since you need only jump once. This passage now has a grill in the way that you need to push to dislodge. The hallway now has a slide gap that you have to slide twice to get under. And the container placements are different. And this here, don't slide too late or it'll catch you. Now, the new final room. As usual, get the button, go up, and jump preemptively for the rail, don't wait. But now, go up these jump walls, then jump towards this hanging crate to get across the gap. And these truss jumps honestly are better off done like this, as the way you'd imagine is near impossible from my experience. Get up to the jump wall, disable mouse lock if you have it on, or don't, whichever you prefer. Twist your camera towards the bridge and jump. Climb up to the next jump wall, turn your camera, and jump onto these small bridge pieces. Continue your way up, clear the gap, then hop onto the elevator, and you're there. Definitely a more fitting challenge for an iconic map revamp. Oh jeez, this video's getting long. Not for the same reason as Overflow at least, but anyway, I hope this breakdown helps you in your endeavors in this fast-paced, mostly mouse lock-free map. And shut down. So until next time, Bane worth out.